You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. sense of this world through the eye of the soul. Welcome to Soul Sense with your host, Beth Lynch. Come join us as Beth helps you to understand who we are as an energetic, spiritual, and human being. Beth can assist in connecting with loved ones and accepting their guidance and love. So now, please welcome the host of Soul Sense, Beth Lynch. Hello. Welcome to Soul Sense. I am Beth Lynch, your host, medium, intuitive consultant, and I am here, well, actually, I'm usually here every Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern, but I will, this will be the last live show. Um, You can catch a pre-recorded show next Thursday and if there's any show that you would like to hear again please know you can email me at soulsense1111 at gmail.com for that or for any other information on services classes and events I've enjoyed being here and I do plan on coming back but right now a lot going on with my meditation practice and doing some publicity for my books and things like that, not to mention private practice, which keeps me extremely busy. Thank you all for that support. So today I would love to take calls. Anyone wants a mini reading, a uh, little insight, guidance, or wants to talk to a loved one in spirit, trust me, they are listening. And that number is 866-451-1451. And toward the end of the show, before the last break, I'll do a nice guided meditation and I think you will enjoy that, as always. Um, and we'll think of some a theme or something that we can uh, in, send an intention out for that. Always world peace, but something else for you all personally. So when the phone lines, the phone lines can be open anytime, I think, today. Let's just let it happen if it's meant to. Um, otherwise, enjoy what my topic is today is life, death, Oh, no, I'm sorry. Well, life, death, and everything in between is always what I'm discussing. But the spiritual science of understanding and how that can help us in areas of mental health, whether we're talking about um, anxiety, depression, (sighs) what's all the other topics, you know, whether we're talking about happiness and abundance. So, you know, mental health. Is exa- You know, I always say, break the word down. It's mental, it's thought, it's health. And the word heal is in thought or in health. My goodness, I'm all over the place. And when we look at the spiritual science of living in life today, and I will break that down for you, we actually begin to see and understand our mental health a little differently. But we also are able to empower ourselves and who we are you know we're a thinking feeling species this is what we do we have thoughts we have perceptions we have thoughts about our past we have thoughts in our present and those thoughts create a frequency and energy a vibration if you will through us and around us which basically sends out the magnetics in that vibration frequency that it is for that beautiful, sacred, powerful, natural law of attraction to bring things to us, hold things still, or even repel things. So in order to understand how we can begin to heal ourselves as a species, to heal addiction, to heal um the, the mental, the anxiety, the depression, bipolar. I love what the spirit world has taught me about bipolar. 
Might as well just go there right now. Bipolar means two polarities. The spirit world in one of my sessions once said, inform them they have two polarities. That's what bi means, too. So we all have two polarities. But when we are in the diagnosis of bipolar, what's happening is our lower vibrational pattern of thought and creating perceptions has, I would call it, moved its way down into the subconscious. And the subconscious is, you know, things we're not even consciously thinking, if you will. So they're down there running in a vibrate the vibration and creating this frequency and then guess what dr wayne dyer bless his soul taught us that the law of attract or the the subconscious is 85 percent of what our law of attraction will um resonate or control you know bring to us hold still or or repel so think about that Maybe 85% of your thoughts, if they are in a low vibration or negative, which I call the gate of light, add some light, add some sunshine in some of your deepest, darkest thoughts, then you will begin to balance the polarity of your body. You would come out of even the diagnosis of bipolar your consciousness, how long you've been in it. Yes, it is chemical. A lot of people will say to me, well, there's things that are chemical. Yes. The body's vibration creates the chemical balances or imbalances. So you can argue the point all you want. It is going to come down a lot to perception and thought. Oh, sorry. My phone's ringing. Remind me to turn that down. So when we, um, when we go there, when yeah, that distracted me, didn't it? When we understand that we, first of all, have the two polarities and we have, through the discipline or being a disciple of our thought patterns, perceptions, what we look back on, how we think of it, whether it's yesterday or 10 years ago. And there is chemical, you know, changes in the body, but there are there is enough studies showing that in meditation or in prayer, the actual brain changes frequency changes chemicals changes endorphins we work out our endorphins get you know pumped up too so all we have to do is and there it's throwing me right into the science of things the science is all of that all of those things the chemical the, the frequency the the uh the you know studies that are done just YouTube it it's there it's you know not I don't have it all on the tip of my tongue but and then the spiritual of course is the sacredness of this knowledge the sacredness of our intelligence as a human being and we don't treat it sacredly the species the species has clearly moved away from the sacredness and the the divinity of its creation. And you can even say of its creator, but then that draws in all these different religious stuff that you got to kind of get off while you're hot and bothered about. Well, guess what? It isn't about religion. Whatever religion you choose, you choose. Just make sure it makes you feel good. Make sure it makes you not judge others. Make sure it, it makes you not want to fight and defend it. Because guess what? If it's doing that, you're in a low frequency of your own belief system. And guess what you're doing then? You might as well not even have one. It's basically what you're, what's happening inside your body. Your cells, your systems resonate to the most highest frequency possible, which is the spiritual essence of who you are. Spirit is energy. You are energy. Go ahead and tell me you're not a spiritual person, and I'm going to kind of giggle inside with all due respect and say, well, someday you will find out otherwise because you are energy. And if you are here talking and thinking and feeling or listening or whatever you're doing, you are energy. There is energy before you have done any of that. You have had a thought. You have had emotional connection, and you have created the condition of it. Hmm. Does that give you a lot to think about or what? <laughs> I think so. Um, it's kind of like spiritual science in a nutshell. But so how do you, you know, how do you take back, you know, that power? Maybe you have to look at it like, did you ever have it? You know, I often look at when people say, well, I want my relationship to be what it used to be. I would think twice before you put that out in the law of attraction because guess what? 
if it's the way it used to be, it has gotten you the way it things are now. So that's if you're, for example, for struggling in a relationship, not where you want it to be, not in the loving space you want it to be. Relationships are a big one. Everything's a relationship. There's nothing that isn't. So if we're talking about a significant other, even if you're thinking about them in past tense, because I remember, I remember doing a reading on a gentleman once. And it was quite interesting that when I brought up his little, where he, you know, little things that kind of hit his heart deeply, he said, that was 20 years ago, and I can't believe I'm still living in that now. And, I, and he realized it. I didn't tell him. So um, we're going to talk a little bit more about relationships and the spiritual science of understanding them to make them happy, healthy, and abundant for us when we come back from our break. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 BC when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 B.C. to the time that men began achieving political power around 3000 B.C. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. Hi, welcome back to Soul Sense. I'm Beth Lynch, your host, and we are here talking today about spiritual science, um, how to understand the spiritual science, how it can help us be a happier, healthier, wealthier human being, person, um, community, species. And when I ended the last segment, I was chatting about a gentleman who, um, when the reading started and he started to get insight, I imagine, from his father, and whoever else was there for him, him, and they brought in some childhood things, and then he just kind of got, you know, very emotional and said, I am living in my new relationship like I was living in my ex relationship, for, and that was 20 years ago, because it was getting sabotaged, and that's what he was concerned about, that he was going to, you know, in his second marriage, and he didn't really want it to end, but he didn't know what else to do, so that's when people come to me, and then they hope the spirit world will give them all the guidance on what to do, A, B, C, and D, and they don't, but they certainly know how to bring in information in wisdom and love to you to help you reflect and feel what you need to feel. And it comes up then from your subconscious to your conscious mind. That's how mediums kind of work a little bit um, when we're giving guidance. And then it allows you to realize what you need to realize. You know, any reader, reader can tell you anything you want to hear. And if you're here hitting the psychic level, then there's times that that can be misinterpreted, telling you, you know, something that you really want to manifest. Um, and maybe it isn't for your higher good. Where in a spiritual uh, reading level, you will uh, mediate between the higher self and even higher ups, if you will, loved ones, sometimes even the angels have seen beautiful visions of the Divine Mother and her son come in. And yes, people don't get that. But when you are have a foundation as Catholic as a child and, and you get you're comfortable with that and you you 
you feel these entities that are around you and you trust them more sometimes than humans. <laughs> that was me. Um, because the peace it felt to see them or just feel a voice and know it was something supreme. There's a trust in that. So whether it's when you're, you know, standing in the park and you can feel the message from a tree or are you feeling a divinity, a divine being speak to you or a loved one in spirit, there's no difference. Um, there's a beautiful uh, experience I had it, that, the, and I don't want to get off my topic, but I'd love to share the dolphin story of, you know, this intelligence and this light and this divine communication we have with what the divine invisible, the divinity, the, you know, it, it's natural. This is not unnatural. Stop putting, I don't per, per, personally don't feel comfortable when people say you are right. You're always right on. I, I don't really feel that that's something I want to hear. It's not me. I'm a messenger. And spirit world is not going to bring wrong. You know, so when you're reading from a higher spiritual space, because that's what you want to read from, and you're devoted to it, and you do what it takes to tune yourself in for yourself and your own personal things, as well as for those who give that unbelievable sacred trust to you every single day in sessions to connect them with loved ones, to help them heal, to help them have guidance. Um, into their relationships or their choices that they're facing professionally. What else is there? Personal, professional, I don't know. Is there anything else going on in anyone's world? Let me know. I'd love to add it to the to the pot. Um, but pretty much that's it. There is a lot of subtitles, though, underneath that. So as we go into that and we start to see you know, that the subconscious brings, releases something and it comes up to a person's conscious mind and, you know, they get into tears and they feel this almost epiphany of peace inside themselves and strength and yes, I can do this. And then you got to go out the door and you got to do it. And I tell people often, eight minutes, eight minutes a day can be an amazing shift if you meditate. What is meditation? Mediating between what you think how you feel between what you think and how you respond emotionally, being active as opposed to reactive. This is what we're here to experience. And if we want to do that going into a church and going on our knees, if we want to do that being an artist or a musician, or if we want to do that being, you know, just whatever creative gift or ability we we know we are good at or whatever, some people it's numbers. Numerology is amazing. I know nothing really about it, some basic stuff. But oh, when you look at numbers and you and you resonate to numbers, it's amazing what it teaches us, sacred geometry. There's so many aspects to the spiritual science of who you are. And yes, there is a place for it in schools. There absolutely is creative expression. What do you think that is? Coming from your personality that overthinks everything? No. It's coming from your intuitive nature. It's flowing from your soul into your spirit and into your personality to express it through your body. And every day, this doesn't have to be thought of in detail every day. Stop. Breathe. The greatest gift you have is the ability to breathe. It's very frustrating for me to be around people who abuse that. And people I care about very much who abuse their ability to breathe, whether they're smoking, vaping, ah, whatever else you can put into your beautiful lungs that are unbelievably uh, just how they work, how the whole human body works. It's sacred. It's spiritual. So stop thinking you're not a spiritual being and just maybe say it. All right, I'll be one. Um, <laughs> I'll be one. Okay, I'll be one. You'd be surprised what that might set into motion for you. Humor heals. Laugh at yourself. Do it for a week. See where it gets you. Is everything else working for you? Because this is about your happiness. This is about your health, your mental health, your physical health, your emotional well-being. This is about your finances, and that gets everybody's attention because money is energy. You have an emotional relationship with it. You have thoughts about it. What are those thoughts? Reflect on them today. If you want your financial situation to change, and trust me, I have had to practice what I preach. If you want it to shift and grow, you have to heal 
any false perceptions you carry about it. And don't say there's never enough or will I ever have enough. You might as well just close your bank accounts because <laughs> you're, you're, you're dooming your, your financial growth. And sometimes, no, it doesn't happen as fast as you want. But as long as you're being creative and you know you're putting it out there. I live it every day in this in the in the you know the spiritual world. You know, money isn't just in a backyard in my tree growing. It's a business, and I have to respect it and treat it sacredly. I would say my challenge is keeping order, keeping order in it, keeping things organized, keeping up on certain things. That's why I have to invest in someone who I trust and care, who I know cares about helping me and. And let that person do the parts I can't do. Or, you know, I'll say choose not to because they're time consuming and they do. Sometimes there's just not enough hours in the week. That's okay. Recognize where you have to slow something down. Or That's why even I'll use the radio show. Um, I would love to keep going, but right now my schedule is getting more demanding back into the high school for the kids for meditation room um, three days a week. So many hours a day and the private practice, and it's okay. It's a blessing. And so we have to reflect on what is blessing us and what is working for us right now and where we want to put energy to, to grow. And reflect on that as we go to break. What what comes forward to you that you feel maybe you want to put energy, more energy into? And we will be back. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Leip is a Renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com. Dot com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Hello, I'm Steve Fagan, and I'm president and CEO of Fagan Associates, but I'm also a life coach. I'm here to help you reach your dreams, goals, and objectives. As a life coach, it's my job to be your support, to be your teammate, to help you understand what is your dream, what is your life passion, and then together we work as that team to help you reach your specific goals. Life is worth living the best you can be. Working with a life coach, you're fulfilling those dreams and goals is your passion, and it's your way of living. Let me help you do that today. Let me help you really reach the best that you can be as a person and live the life you should be living. I'm Steve Fagan. I'm a life coach, and I'm here for you. Contact Steve Fagan at FaganAndAssociatesInc.com or call 1-800-239-2701. And I'll be glad to help you move forward to live the life of success. Reach your dreams, your goals, your objectives. We can do it together. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Soul Sense, and we're talking about the spiritual science of living and how it can help us as a personally, personally, mm, professionally, um, in our for our children, our communities, our schools, our schools, our communities. Probably the direction I should say, and our world. Why are we afraid to think that big? You know, consciousness. We are all consciousness. We are all energy before we are physical. My book, Soul Rising, I might as well give a little plug of that. The Spiritual Science of Living. I often say um, it has made me, the the dealing with so many young uh, in their 20s coming to me, parents bringing me them to help them with meditation, to get off medication, to get off, uh, help them with addiction, just to help them in school with their grades or their emotional, uh, help them with their emotional issues that they're dealing with as a teen or a young tw- or a 20-something. Um, it's just crazy how much that inspired me and whether the children were on the 
spirit world side or this side. I mean, it's really both is where I began to see the need or how much they deserve to understand the spiritual and the science of living in life today. They are wired energetically. They are in a higher frequency when they enter the earth plane. And from the beginning, things start dropping their frequency and there's such a... um, I feel this division from their own divinity that that hurts them so dearly. And it's why I think, and I know we have seen addiction um, in our the 30-somethings, the 20-somethings is just completely, completely out of control. And often in, in sessions I have heard, you know, you have created an addicted um, a society because you are addicting your children at five, six, seven years old with these medications that are not necessary. And yeah, that rattles a lot of cages, but guess what? Do you see what the species is like right now? Do your homework before you get upset about it. Do your homework and learn that these medications, pharmaceuticals to help kids focus and hold still, if you will, and suppress them, suppress their emotional ability, the ability to feel and to have compassion. We're seeing heartless crimes done by young people, heartless because they don't feel compassion when their vibrational field gets down too low. That's running their consciousness. It's affecting the chemicals in their brain. So yes, we had to go there in this episode, the pharmaceutical connection to mental health and the decline of mental health. Look, there are some pharmaceuticals that are helping people. And in that 2%, which is exactly what the spirit world says it is, 2% of the people on pharmaceuticals help are helped. That's a really low percentage, people. That means 98% are unnecessarily or over-prescribed medications. I did readings, two sessions last week. Well, that might have been a couple of weeks ago. One was on nine medications, one young woman raising children, and one was on seven. Adderall, Ativan, Xanax for the emergency anxiety, Ambien to help them sleep. Oh, and there's a few others that I couldn't even name because I couldn't say them. Um, made me feel very – they were very – almost in their own experiential experience without permission. Um, just couldn't <sighs> – By the time they leave a session, and this isn't giving credit to me, this is giving credit to the spiritual um, understanding of when you sit in spirit, when you sit with spirit, when you sit in a moment of meditation and and prayer and a blessing, and you communicate with your loved ones in spirit, or you communicate with your own highest self in meditation, they were balanced, I know one of them said, I can't believe I haven't felt normal in 12 years. I've been on this. I haven't felt normal. I feel normal for the first time. And she cried, but she laughed. And all I can do is hope that she continued her meditations that I gave her, which I give everybody. And I will give you, if you uh, uh, email me, I'll send them to you, soulsense1111 at gmail.com. Um, it's an MP3. It gives you a daily practice, quite a few to choose from. Then... You know, you just look in someone's eyes and feel that. And then there's those in spirit that I'm looking at their loved ones here because they crossed over because of misuse or abuse. You know, we're creating addiction. We have have to take that responsibility before we can respond to our abilities as an intelligent and emotional species. There's the science. You have to to understand we are very much in a pivotal point of our own evolution of who we are but it's interesting that I just saw a caveman like when I was talking in my inner vision you know we need to stop being in a cave we need to stop being so primitive we need to understand we've evolved technically but not spiritually because we're so afraid of that where we're for goodness sake we're in war over this still we're in war over belief systems and money and fear and control and horrendous acts toward humanity. We're at war over this with the intelligence we have in this war, in this world today. And, you know, not to be a downer, but we have the ability to destroy ourselves, but we have the ability to evolve to a place of such compassion and love for one another. That it's, and a lot of people think that's fluff. I don't think anybody listening to this does. It isn't fluff. 
It's real. It's about as real as it's going to get. Look at the people around you. Slow down. Just slow down. Look who's sitting next to you sometimes. Look who's walking by you. Sometimes they need a smile. Sometimes you need a smile. Slow down. Breathe. Look around. Feel what's around you. Be aware. Do this as we go to break. Wherever you are, whatever room you're in, start breathing slowly and just scan it slowly. Do it three or four times, breathing a little slower each time. We come back, and I'm going to do it as well. We'll talk about it. Intergenerational programming is uniting America due to the tireless efforts of Dr. Ramona Frischman. Retired from the Miami-Dade County Public School System, Dr. Frischman continues to develop intergenerational learning programs aimed to improve the lives of children, young adults, and seniors through unique strategies and public policy in order to establish a mutually supportive agenda. She views intergenerational programs as a resource for policymakers and the general public on economic, social, and personal initiatives that govern our society. Her work bridges the generational gap, providing many individuals the opportunity to explore areas of common ground and celebrate each other's diversity. Contact Ramona Frischman at RamonaLong at AOL.com or visit www.gu.org to learn more about intergenerational programming. Abuse happens every moment of every day. According to national statistics in the United States, every two minutes someone is sexually assaulted and every 10 minutes a report of child abuse is made. Those currently struggling with abuse, or if you know someone who has been the victim of abuse, you are not alone. Whether physical, mental, emotional, or sexual, no, there is hope. There is help. There is healing. Author Tammy Hall has written a book from her own account of abuse called Journey of Courage that can guide you through your own personal journey of healing. Stop struggling through life. It's your story. It's your healing, and it can begin with the first turn of the page. Visit www.journeyofcourage.com to begin your path to becoming the person you were ultimately created to be. Healed, hopeful, happy. Hello, welcome back to Soul Sense. I'm Beth Lynch, and kind of took you through a little meditative exercise Um before we went to break, where you would slow your breathing down and look around where you are in your room. And um, <laughs> I became a little aware of how organized it needs to get. Um, I noticed drawers that were open that I didn't even notice were open. I noticed just some simple things. A pair of shoes I never even took out of a box yet. Maybe I'll do that today. <laughs> and I just kind of laughed at myself at some of the things I was noticing. But then I became aware that I have, I was still breathing slowly. I became aware of a picture of Jesus and Buddha next to each other and Einstein on the other wall. And I just became aware of the kind of uh, picture my son drew with his name in it when he was like seven years old. I don't know. Never know. Might have a little artiste in him. Um, But it's pretty interesting. It's a fish with his name in it, all black and white, and I framed it. It's on the wall. Something I hadn't looked at in a while. And just stood here looking at it and looking at the flowers and the funny things he drew in it at such a young age. And I don't know, you just sometimes stop and you become aware and it feels good. It slows you down. And what you're doing is really opening yourself up to your own intuitive, uh, that, that an opportunity. Oh, sorry for the dog, everyone. That opportunity for... Um, Your intuition to guide you, work through you, give you something you were worried about yesterday. Sometimes when you're putting out uh, for guidance and information, it's not always right then and there. So, but it's never far along. Trying to text my husband to get him to get the dog. (laughs) Sorry, everyone. So anyways, you, you know, once in a while throughout the day, you could probably do that four or five times 
there's nothing wrong with just stopping and taking a moment. If you want a mantra or something to use, you can even I as you inhale, M as you exhale, and sorry everyone, and just use something like that. I need that right now um, for myself. So I think the I think the what you call it guy is here. So I apologize, everyone. The UPS. That's why she won't stop. So stop, breathe, be aware. Use that every day. And that little exercise. Use something that allows you to become more of a disciple or discipline your own thoughts that are traveling through your mind right now. Right now in this moment. Throughout your day. And how loud is that? Is that very loud, Tech? <laughs> Can you hear? Yeah. Yeah. If she does, I'm going to go put her in the other room because that's the only way. So, or we can just let her bark. What do you want me to do? <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, so it's the first time she's ever done this, really. So of all this, the year of a show, years of a show. So when we do these exercises, again, it's going to raise your frequency. So here's our science. It's going to allow you to connect yourself more into your intuitive nature and allow you to be able to download more the, the, the higher guidance or wisdom that is here for you and your journey, whatever it is you put out. So begin, when we talk about mental health, begin with that. You want mental health. I think one of the most... The, the, the challenges we face is whenever we hear mental health, we actually think it's a negative. It's not a negative. Mental is thought. Health has the word heal, and I said that in the beginning. We want to he- – we have the ability to heal, which if you look at the science of the word heal, is raise the frequency up from sadness to to strength from grief is a low frequency emotion. We have thoughts about grief. We miss our loved ones. That's how I have even gotten to this place. People coming to me for that sensitivity, you know, that I have and I'm devoted to. Abuse happens every moment of every day. According to national statistics in the United States, every two minutes someone is sexually assaulted and every 10 minutes a report of child abuse is made. Those currently struggling with abuse, or if you know someone who has been the victim of abuse, you are not alone. Whether physical, mental, emotional, or sexual, no, there is hope. There is help. There is healing. Author Tammy Hall has written a book from her own account of abuse called Journey of Courage that can guide you through your own personal journey of healing. Stop struggling through life. It's your story. It's your healing, and it can begin with the first turn of the page. Visit www.journeyofcourage.com to begin your path to becoming the person you were ultimately created to be. Healed. Hopeful. Happy. Horses. Mystical. Present. Past. And future. All in one. Wild. Free. Domestic. And healing. For everyone. Betty Hames knows this and has put her horses to good use with Nature Connect Equine Coaching. Her mission is to help people affected by the loss of hope and trust in their lives and to rediscover the wonders of nature through nature-connected learning so they can rebuild their lives and live peacefully with newfound hope, trust, and joy. Betty Hames is also a certified elite life coach, a Washington State certified counselor, and chemical dependency professional. She is passionate about partnering nature with healing, and through horses, she sees amazing results and transformation in lives that might have otherwise been lost. Call 509-830-9225 and visit her at HamesLifeCoaching.com. Hold your horses. You're in for the ride of your life. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. And I had to just break away and get that dog under control. So I do apologize for that. And we went to break. So I was, you know, just giving you a little understanding or a lot of understanding, I would think, about how to understand um, 
net addiction thoughts, the mental health, your own mental health, that you have the ability to heal the thoughts that you are having, raise their vibration, take the science, take a breath and know if you go from, it doesn't mean not to feel this, the sadness or the grief or things like that. I think that's important. It's not about avoiding those emotions. It's about allowing them. It's about breathing them through them. Um, and then having them and then taking it when you're, you know, I always tell people who really need some discipline, five minutes, 10 minutes, the most. And then you go into your, maybe your little breathing and looking around where you are and being present, or you change the vision of what happened into something where you're, if it's a person, for example, you're able to communicate with this person smiling And get into the feeling of that, even if it's not physically what is manifested right at that time. There's a lot of times where I use the mantra divine communication. You want to communicate from your divinity, from your highest self. So if you're in a relationship and you're struggling and you don't know how to communicate, which is usually what it is. And if we communicate from our highest place, we're going to communicate with compassion. We're going to communicate with with intelligence. We're going to communicate for the higher good of the relationship, not what you think is your highest and what they think is their highest because otherwise – That can be two different things, but sometimes it can bring you to the realization that it's actually you want the same for each other. You want the same individually. You want the same for each other. And, you know, I when I think of all, you know, when I think about meditation and, you know, being in this consciously on purpose for 24 years for others, but also wanting to understand my own um, desire to understand this personally for, you know, the, the, oh my God, 30 years. I'm, my goodness, numbers. Um, you growing up, you know, our 20s, our 30s, what are we doing? Our teens, our 20s, our 30s, what are we doing? We're, we're learning, we're experiencing, we're exploring, we're experimenting. And, you know, we're trying to be happy. And sometimes we're looking at it in another person or we're looking at it in a substance or we're looking at it in, in uh, shopping or the, you know, the right clothes or the hair. Oh, my God. We're always looking outside of ourselves. And what we have to do is really look inside of ourselves and get that connection back to who we truly are because in that essence there's a lot of fun I often tell my young people that come to me spirituality is fun it's funny you know um, you can laugh at yourself you can you can you see when you use humor you heal it raises the frequency immediately of anything um, and you know I had a special moment with a friend the, uh, the other day, I had to go with her to the doctor. She had been diagnosed early detection, thank God. And we had to go to the doctor, and it took out. It ended up being a very long session, but he was very thorough and explained to her everything she's going to have to go through: surgery, radiation. And then we said, "She, I had to stop at the car dealership." And she said, "Let's stop. It's okay. I'm fine." So we did. And the guy told me it was going to be an hour and a half. And and I I had been told it'd be about fifteen minutes. So I said, "Well, I can't." I said, "My friend," I said, "You know, we just got back. We were in." in the city for hours and now um there was like you know 10 12 people ahead of me and i go and she just got diagnosed with breast cancer so that can i can please reschedule it wasn't like i really i just like can i reschedule she just got diagnosed with breast cancer and and it's been a long morning and he just looked at me and he looked at the guy and he said how many are before and he said oh a lot and he goes well her friend just got diagnosed with breast cancer can we get him in and he took my keys and he i ran out to the car and i said to my girlfriend well look what your breast cancer just did we just got we're in (laughs) and we she laughed and she couldn't stop laughing and it was beautiful to see her laugh and no breast cancer is not funny it is not funny at all but we had that moment of so much emotion and draining and and it's fear that went on in her and for her especially I was her support I was being strong in those that whole morning for hours with that doctor and then we have this moment where we can laugh you know and she laughed and knew that, and that she goes, my God, I just feel like it's gone because I, I feel like all my fear went away in this moment of laughter over this car dealership. Maybe I got to use this more often. And we laughed again. And like I said, nothing funny sometimes. Sometimes the things that we're, we have to laugh with for are not funny, but that's okay because there are no endings. She's not going anywhere. 
You know, we know that. We feel that. And there are cases where that's not the outcome. We know. But there, there's eternal life. Do we want to look at some of the things we face in the mental, in our mental, in our thoughts? If we all thought of death as the end, there would not be a happy human being on the planet. Death is not the end. We will grieve. We will shed tears. And we will laugh and think of the happy things. But we will, they are an eternal life. And somebody's got to be there first. So if it's not them, it's going to be you. And when we honor and treat that transition in that way, it helps us heal. It helps us grieve. It helps us become creative and feel the blessings that are there for us as we are in this beautiful expression as a human being where we have a beautiful ability to think, to feel, to be compassionate, to love, to laugh. In spite of the tears, in spite of the fear and the anger and the grieving, which we have, we can make those moments smaller. Maybe that's all we're doing. Less of those moments. Have them, but don't let them dominate. Don't let them dominate. You know, I had someone in my office not long ago, and she was on medication for the death of her grandmother, who was like 90. And I thought, you know, well, you know, grandma was coming through and I'm like, wait a minute. She feels like she's been in the spirit world a while. She's quite the wise woman. She goes, well, she's been gone like, you know, 20 years, 20 years. There's no time in the soul. But to keep some grief for someone who had a beautiful, fulfilling life and they were 90 and they passed naturally with no big, you know, you got to allow the understanding of death to transition into eternal life. There are some passings that are going to be a lot harder than others. I see them every day in my room. I have lived some of them. And there are are some that are the grace that they had those 90-something years and you were able to even know your great-grandmother or great-great-grandmother. That's a blessing. And you have a wiring in you To understand eternal life. To live in eternal life. Even on earth. On earth as it is in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. Powerful quote. It's a beautiful quote to breathe slowly and repeat in your mind. When you feel confused. When you feel sad, angry. Even when you feel happy. Nothing wrong with stopping, just having a moment of gratitude on earth as it is in the divine, on earth as it is in the highest intelligence. Say what you want, on earth as it is in heaven, on earth as it is in the universe. We think you're saying the same thing, so <laughs> it doesn't. nobody's going to punish you for saying it in the way you feel you relate more. It's okay. You know, there's a lot of foundation in us to be um, I don't know I feel we search for a sense of security and and in that search in the physical world you will always be let down or that search in another person you will probably be let down even in the greatest of love somewhere because if you're not giving it to yourself in some way you will always have that subconscious fear that it could be taken And nobody can take it if we give it to ourselves. It's already there. Just plug into the source. Plug into the outlet. You plug your devices in. Plug into your outlet once a day. That's your spirit. Your spirit connects you to that infinite source, the divine, eternal life, the universe, the cosmic consciousness, the stars. And addiction can't live there. Anxiety and depression cannot form in there. It's not possible. If you want to heal the mental health of yourself, of your people, of your communities, of your world, it's got to start there. And it that may seem like a big chore, but you got to start with yourself because it spreads. It spreads. It expands. I think I like that word better. It expands. Nothing wrong with that. 30 seconds. So if you want to get more into meditation, you can always go over to my website, 
innerlightteachings.com and click on meditation and inspiration. You can go on over to that anytime, any time of the day, and it's there for you. So we will be back, and we come back, we're going to do a little meditation and wrap things up. Thank you. Are you stressed? Is your stress driving you crazy? Do you know there are many ways to relieve the stress? The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic does just that. Reduce your stress plus so much more. Established in 1997, the Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic offers an approach to wellness for those individuals who choose to either utilize appropriate complementary methods to enhance their current medical care or to those individuals who are on their personal journey toward improved health and wellness through the use of therapeutic bodywork, Reiki energy healing, or hypnosis. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic is owned by Dr. Judy Dean, a registered nurse and board-certified massage therapist and medical hypnotherapist in LaPorte, Indiana. Visit www.spiritwithinmassage-hypnosis.com to see all services offered by Dr. Judy. For a free personal consultation, please call Dr. Judy Dean at 219-326-1380. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic, 219-326-1380. My Dreams, My Challenges, and Joys is an inspiring book by author Linda Genazzo. This real-life account of raising a child with autism from birth to adulthood takes you on a journey of compassion, love, and hope as it tells the incredible story of a devoted family and their beloved daughter. Together, they faced adversity and never stopped believing they would find the help they were seeking. A breast cancer survivor, Linda Genazzo has a giving heart. With a background in social work with the mentally ill and the homeless, Linda continues to help families in her community. And her book, My Dreams, My Challenges and Joys, brings greater awareness to autism and those families in need. To purchase your copy, visit www.lindagenazzo.com. It's also available on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. Don't delay. Get your copy today. Hello, welcome back to Soul Sense. I'm Beth Lynch, your host, and this is our final live show. This show will be played um, on re- uh, repeat of this show tomorrow, or tomorrow, next Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern. All the shows are available to download or listen to as well, so just go on over to the, the website. You will see that over there. I will put the link up on my website. Um, I just want to cover a few things before we go into our beautiful meditation. I thank you all so much for tuning in to Soul Sense. Um, I do a free live meditation every first and third Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern. You can register on my website. It is free. It is simple. All you need is your email and you can tune in and join me in guided meditation uh, every first and third Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern. It's about 9 to 9.30. Pretty simple. And also all my books on uh, my my new my book journey to light has been re-edited and republished through balboa hay house i am so excited about that so balboa is um, now taking journey to light under its wings and i have a feeling it will go in beautiful places it's a beautiful book i wrote uh in 2010 and i just kind of re-edited a little very little bit in the beginning and it's um been special to my heart and I'm very grateful that I have the opportunity to go under Balboa with this book. Also, um, what else do I talk about? Well, I guess that's it. Go on over to the website. But I really want to take you into a little meditation and time goes very fast in this last segment. So wherever we end up, we end up. But thank you all again for tuning in to Soul Sense and I do appreciate it and listening to BBM Global Network. There's beautiful hosts and shows on here always. So please stay tuned to the network. So with that being said, let's go into our meditation. If you can, close your eyes, comfortably close them. If not, just find a space to gaze at and start breathing slowly. And I want you to bring your awareness into the inner light in your heart. A light that you may see, feel, or just know you are one with. This light creates a spiral of stars. 
You're breathing slowly. See, feel, or know the spiral of stars in your heart center begins to expand through you. Every cell recognizes this divine love. And you breathe up the spiral in the center of your forehead. In this spiral, slow your breath a little more. Keep it comfortable. It begins to expand. Deep behind the eyes, relaxing the eyes as it expands high above and all around you. And every cell recognizes this divine light. And now, allow it to expand beyond the stars. And you allow yourself to embrace the divine wisdom, the divine love of the universe the divine and you're going to carry this with you today every day as you go forth in your journey smile thank you all for tuning in to soul sense i hope you have a beautiful divine day week year and life You've been listening to Soul Sense with your host, Beth Lynch. Join us each week as Beth brings to light the spiritual connection to those on the other side, as well as to those around us here on Soul Sense with Beth Lynch. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.